I'm your new neighbor. Without giving away too much, um, I play Heather, who is a painter in a suburb, very similar to Elk Grove. <laughs> and um, she's, she like her parents passed away. She's lonely, you know, has maybe a friend or two. And then Tyler, as if you've seen the trailer, a very handsome man moves in on her street. And you know, you know, you, you don't you don't know someone until you really know them. <laughs> so some chaos, some chaos starts to happen. And uh it's uh yeah, you'll have to check it out. <laughs> Saturday. I guess I need to move slow. <laughs> Your character Heather, I mean, tell me a little bit more what she like and you know, in what way were you able to relate to that character? Well, it was it was really cool because, you know, first of all, I've been in LA auditioning for seven plus years now. And everyone as an actor, it's always like, what's for you is for you, right? And I wholeheartedly believe this character was made for me. Like I related so much. She was a struggling artist trying to, you know, persevere and continue to believe in herself when, you know, the results weren't happening. <laughs> and that's been me. <laughs> and um, also just like a kind person. She had the friends that she did have. Uh, I think, but that was where I really was able to hook into the character of like, oh, I know what this is like to be persevering and believe in yourself and feel like nobody else does. And then something good seems like it's gonna happen the dude in this case and then like the despair and disappointment and betrayal when it turns into something that isn't necessarily positive so um yeah it just felt very easy to relate to <laughs> i figured it out where i know you from <gasps> why don't you block me sins in the suburbs premiere saturday at eight only on lifetime I'm just grateful. I'm so grateful to God and my family, my friends. Um, I was at my wit's end, you know? I, this last summer, I told myself I was done. I was over it. I was tired of trying to prove my worth to people that couldn't see it. I knew what I was worth, but it felt like nobody else did. And I was talking to my mom about it. I was like, you know what, mom, I'm going to move to Costa Rica. I'm just going to live in nature and just, I'm just going to do that because I'm over it. <laughs> Although, you know, mother knows best. So thankfully she talked me out of it. She was like, you know what, Monique, you've been doing this seven years, child. That's not that long in comparison of the rest of your life. Keep at it. This is what you want to do. This is what you wanted to do since you were a kid. Just, just keep going. I was like, ah, all right. And then a month later, I booked this movie and it just felt like God, like confirming, like, I got you, you know? How long have you waited for this day to come? <sighs> Honestly, since I was a kid, when I was a kid, maybe three or four years old, I would tell I would point at the TV and I'll tell my parents, I'll say, I want to be in the TV. I don't know if I knew what that meant at that age, but I knew I wanted to be in the TV and I'm gonna be in the TV on Saturday. Yeah, I had this thought the other day that I was like, you know, my, I have seen my dreams real, realized, you know, I'm gonna be on TV. This is something that I've been working towards for a very long time. And this is the first big thing. And I have so many other aspirations and goals within this career and life. And I'm like, I had these dreams and they're happening. So everything that I think of now is gonna happen. And I just have to keep working hard and going towards that. And I'm just, just so excited and so grateful to have a taste of what is to come. I think I'm just most looking forward to celebrating with everyone. You know, I've being on this journey, you watch a lot of your friends have success and it's inspiring. You know, it's like, oh, if they can do it, I can do it. And I just hope that that is what people can take away from this. And I hope that people enjoy the film and are on the edge of their seat because I haven't seen it yet either. I was there filming it, but I haven't seen the edit. You know, I don't know the background music. I don't know how, because the trailer was intense. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, this, okay. We're going to be holding on for dear life watching this. Hold on. 
So I'm just, I'm, I'm excited for everyone to see it. I'm excited for everyone to watch it together. And yeah, I'm just excited for people to see something. I've been doing theater for so long. I've been acting for so long. I've been in classes, but no one's gotten to see me really work. So I'm excited for people to see. I think all of it is really special. I, I believe in divine timing. I believe in everything happening, how it's supposed to and God's timing. And, you know, I also say literally a year ago, the last weekend of March last year, I filmed my first short film that I'm still in post-production for and that like I wrote and co-directed and stuff. And this past year has just been such a transformative time in my life. Well, I have to give a shout out to all the folks that, you know, uplifted me in Sacramento. You know, I, my first play I was in was at Elliott Ranch and I played a grandma in Willy Wonka. So shout out to the folks that was helping fourth grade me. <laughs> and then Miss Benelli at Toby was an amazing theater teacher. Miss Sandoval at Franklin High School. I know you know Miss Sandoval, incredible. And you don't realize until you get older how incredible the teachers are in your life, you know? And I just, I'm, I learned so much from them. And I was even like a teacher's assistant. I got to be in plays. And I'm just so grateful for the foundation that was set for me in Elk Grove specifically and even Sacramento Theater Company I was I worked with them for a while and I was just able to learn leadership not just acting but like leadership and being a good person and having a good moral compass in these LA streets <laughs> <laughs> I literally feel like my whole life has been a boot camp for what is to come I believe that so fervently and I keep getting uh, examples of that. You know, I, I taught theater for five, six years after college. I performed all over the world, worked with all kinds of different people. Um, I led Bible studies in college and I had to like host events and talk to people and get very comfortable in my own skin to do everything I want to do without even realizing it. You know, I was just doing it because I'm like, oh, my heart's kind of drawn to this right now. And uh, this opportunity came and I did it to the best of my ability and took a ton of skills along the way. Um, yeah, so even getting this movie and going on set every day, I felt so prepared. Like I wasn't nervous, not one day, which was shocking. <laughs> Because I thought it was going to be like, oh, I say I want to lead role in something. I don't know. But literally every day I woke up super early, worked out, went to set, had my little gold eye masks on <laughs> and I was ready to go. And the responses I got on set with my cast and crew was all very positive and very like, uh, yeah, I, I, I did what I came to do. So I'm excited. My advice is follow your heart. Don't let any of that noise come and distract you. If your heart is set on something, do it and find a way to orchestrate your life around making whatever you want to be possible. Like, and put everything into it. Me, I wanted to be an actor. I knew it was going to take years of auditions to make that happen. But you know what? Let me teach acting. Let me do this other thing. Let me do local community theater. Let me try to immerse myself in my passion as much as possible, and then everything will come to me. And that is my advice, because then you're doing what you love anyway. It might not be at the level that you love yet, but you're still doing what you love, and you're learning along the way. So that's my advice. Hey, my name is Monique Seikens, and I am the lead in the movie Sins in the Suburbs, which is premiering March 19th, this Saturday at 8 p.m., and you can watch it on Lifetime. And if you don't have cable, don't fret. You can sign up on Sling or Philo, or they got the Lifetime TV app, and it will be available to you to stream. So check it out.